Today on the MMA Roundtable, Impact Fighting Championships from Australia, UFC 117, and our predictions for UFC on Versus 2. Just kidding, it's not the Mixed Martial Arts Roundtable, so you can save your wang for another time. We are talking about pro wrestling, although we do occasionally talk about Mixed Martial Arts. Not this time, because it's all about the Attitude Era. Entire show on the Attitude Era here today on Wrestling Roundtable. But before we get down to business, of course, I want to remind you to go to WrestlingRoundtable.com. There you can sign up for our new mailing list, newsletter put together by Jason Aletto, and a lot more on WrestlingRoundtable.com such as the Pro Wrestling Respect 2 DVD, available in our stores, Delirious vs. Ridge. And we also want you to support Pro Wrestling Respect by going to ProWrestlingRespect.com, getting t-shirts, downloads, and lots of other things. And intros are next. I'm the host, Eric Santa Maria. I've been a fan of wrestling 21 years, as has the man to my right, which is your left, Rodney LeCant, director of the Grappling Kings, who will be competing at Naga in Wildwood, August 7th, the weekend of August 7th. But also to my right, which is your left, you may know him as Will from New Jersey on Wrestling Roundtable Radio, but now he's joined the panel. Will Brooks, been a fan of 20 years, and so is the other Will, Will Vafides, fan of 21 years, returning to the roundtable. And, like we were I talking know. about... Go hold your balls. <laughs> like we were talking about, the Attitude Era. The contrast to the PG Era that we're in right now. People are constantly talking about... The Attitude Era was so great, we miss it. This PG stuff for kids, we're sick of it. And I guess TNA isn't living up to their end of the deal where we're going to be the Attitude Era for the new generation and blah, blah, blah. Before we get to it, let's set some guidelines because there is kind of a gray area about when it starts. Now, of course, the WWF at the time started going through a transition period, I like to call it, in 1996. The new guys coming in were pretty much all ex-WCW guys like Gold Dust and Vader. A lot of Austin. Austin. Mm -hmm. A lot of rebuilding was going on in the WWF in 1996, but they still had the Godwins and Headbangers and Fake Diesel and Razor, so it didn't really kick quite as heavy as it would in 1997. So I figured 1997 is a good starting point, and everyone uses WrestleMania 17, which of course was right around when they bought WCW and was the culmination of the Attitude Era as the end point and invasion happened from there on. So let's just use that as the time frame. So. Being that we've all been watching and lived through this time frame when wrestling was mainstream again, or maybe even more mainstream than it was the last time, do you think the move to a more adult-oriented product was really necessary? Yes, they had, um, WCW had those guidelines because of Time Warner. They had to do what they had to do to win, which was become more adult. They couldn't, WCW couldn't do it. They had to do what WCW couldn't do. But why did it have to become more adult? Do you think that had something to do with the demographics? Was it the sign of the times? Maybe even ECW? A lot of people say it was just a big ECW ripoff. I think it was more of a natural evolution. He, with the new generation era, he saw Vince McMahon saw how much money he was losing. And I think it was a necessary change, especially after Bash of the Beach when the NWO was happening. That was more of an adult-oriented storyline with the spray painting people and constant beatings. And I think they knew that like the the product really needed to change. And I think you have to give credit to some of the wrestlers too. I think when Goldust debuted, it was a hint of the Attitude Area because he was pushing the lines of all the things he was doing. I think Sunny also because she was the first heel that it was, because she was so hot, yeah. was cool to like. Yeah. But don't you think it also had something to do with the people of our age? Because when we were kids, Hulk Hogan was the thing, mm -hmm. and we were all into that, but we're becoming much more hormonally charged in our high school teenage years. Yeah. Don't you think Attitude I, was a reflection I think of the, that? I think the whole world was actually changing at that time. Things were definitely getting a little more outgoing than they used to be. There's a lot of guidelines that are now broken it used to be like back in the old days, you know, like the, like today you see thirteen year olds running out with skirts now. Like you don't see, you didn't see and that. Thank God for yeah, that. Yes, <laughs> we didn't see that so long ago. But now it was breaking guidelines to what they saw. And when fans turned in and saw that, they're like, oh wow, that's not what we saw like a couple years ago. So now we're seeing something a little bit different. I'm gonna stay tuned. I'm gonna watch it. You well, know. Well, clearly wrestling became cool again mm -hmm. because we all know that 
a majority of the people, at least in the Northeast, have the same story. I used to watch wrestling when I was a kid, and then I stopped, but then I started watching it again mm -hmm. with this time frame. Wrestling became cool again with Austin and DX, The Rock, and et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes to, I don't want to say blame, but who is behind this? You often hear, as we were talking about, is a reflection of the people, the mm -hmm. fans, ECW maybe. Well, a lot of that ECW was influencing Russo and Ferrara, who started writing at the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, they give themselves the most credit out of anybody, and I think probably deservingly so, because let's not forget that this was also the post-steroid time, when they went to the smaller guys like Michaels and Bret Hart, and they weren't exactly setting the world on fire attendance-wise and rating-wise. They were keeping it afloat, and the people who still watched enjoyed their stuff, but though it was close, to, at least if Vince McMahon is to be believed, close to being bankrupt. They were getting their ass kicked by WCW, and this really sparked the change. So Vince McMahon really needed to be told what we're doing is not working, and that was really Russo and Ferrara. However, people do say that Russo and Ferrara are the type of people that may have good ideas here and there, but need a filter. So the next question I want to ask to everybody is your opinion of, do you think it's Russo and Ferrara who deserve more credit for coming up with this stuff and getting it through, Vince McMahon for saying, yes, this is good and approving it, or, because I never hear this name brought up and I think it should be, Jim Ross. Mm -hmm. Because he was the head of talent relations at the time, and maybe all this stuff might not have worked if he hadn't recruited a lot of these ex-WCW guys, these athletes like The Rock, Kurt Angle, and Brock Lesnar. A lot of the pieces that were important to this puzzle all came into the WWF at the time because of Jim Ross. So who do you think should get the most credit for Attitude Era? I think the also. I think it's a, it was a perfect storm. You know, I think everything worked together. Those guys, yes, they had good ideas, but they also they had that filter of the Michigan man, like you said. But also Jim Ross finding the right talent for all the storylines they had to go with. I think it was a perfect storm. I think they all worked together. I think it worked out great. And the performers to pull it off, right? Yeah. Exactly. I think Russo, you got to give Russo credit for giving performers like The Rock and Stone Cold the chance to take their personality, take these characters, and really go through with it and like write a lot of the stuff. I mean, it's good that Vince McMahon was there because he was able to filter some of the crap that may have made it or may have not have made it on TV, some of the stuff that worked. Credit to the combination of all three. Vince doing the marketing aspect of getting the name out there of the WWF when he got like guys like Tyson to come in because that was a huge deal. What media buzz that got from like everybody saying, oh, Mike Tyson's going into the wrestling world. Then you got like Russo writing tremendous storylines, allowing talent like Shamrock, The Rock, Outlaws coming he out. Wrote something for everybody. Different things, yeah. something for everybody. And then Ross looking around, finding the correct people for these roles that Russo was coming up with. All three of them together, you know, 30% each, were all finding the right thing, and it just happened to work out for them. And I think it's a lot of luck, too, because, you know, luck, it's always a lot of luck sometimes. WCW that. screwing up on the other channel yeah. certainly was <laughs> lucky for them. But the right, maybe. right time, too. It's the right, it's the right time to do things. Right yep. time to really pull the trigger on this new era. Why do you think this format is stuck around so long? And now when I say that, a lot of people, I think, misinterpret what I mean. Because obviously they're PG now and it's a much different time where Cena spray painting poopy on limos instead of <laughs> suck it and blowjobs from transvestites. But what I mean is... The format for the show is pretty much the same. Yeah. All the cameras are the same style. The graphics are the same style. Even the segments are more or less the same style. And even TNA's ripping that off now. Why do you think that this has stuck around so long when wrestling used to really shake itself up and change formats every few years? Because Triple H got in charge and realized, wow, this is what got me to the dance. Why am I going to change it? It makes me look good. You think it's Triple H or is it McMahon wanting to recreate the time when they were the most popular? Not only McMahon, but just a lot of indies. Are, uh, Lawrence said on the show one time, like, even indies are raw now. I mean, every show, whether it's TNA, Raw, SmackDown, whatever, you should start out with someone coming out, cutting a promo. You, 99% of the time, someone's going to cut them off. Then the main event up. that week. Then the main event, that two guys main event in the pay-per-view might main event the Raw before, and then it's going to be some sort of running. I mean, at that time, yes, it might have worked. It might have worked for the Attitude Era, but I think now they still have it in their heads that like people still want to see the Attitude Era. Let's keep up this format and like just keep shoving it down the throats until they 
So well, the only thing they've really restricted is the risky stuff they've done. Right. That's really yeah. it. Other than that, it's really like they they've done better graphics now. They've done like better things as far as they've, they've improved it. They've made some it. adjustments. Well, they've adjusted it. But it's more know. or less the same idea. It's really the same thing. And the only difference now, I think, is not that the talent doesn't get to be themselves anymore. That's, oh, that's very clear. That's, that's pretty clear. But we can still be ourselves here on the round table. And when we come back, more discussion on the Attitude Era. Welcome back to the Wrestling Roundtable. You're probably watching us on YouTube, but you might be watching us on Go Fight Live as well, and you might be listening to us on iTunes. We have our complete archives now updated on iTunes, so check that out, WrestlingRoundtablePodcast.com. And thank you for watching us wherever you are. Please comment, share, subscribe, and rate. Joining the panel is Chris Harris, fan of 18 years combined. And we were talking about the attitude here, Chris, something we suffered through a lot. Unfortunately. <laughs> Well, a lot of people are fond of the Attitude Era. They're surprised when guys like us talk on the table that we weren't too fond of it. And they're wondering why. And a lot of that has to do, I think, with a lot of the stuff that went pretty much over the line. A lot of the offensive stuff that they would come up with. And they know what they're... I think it's a factor of that. And I think it's also a lot of nostalgia in people's minds. Uh -huh. 92, 93... It wasn't the best, but to us, that was, you know, it was really still cartoony, but we still enjoyed it a lot. Well, for me, the attitude here is when wrestling, wrestling died. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, TV matches are like a minute and a half. There was talking for 20 minutes, it was however. A, it seemed to be like a sketch show that somehow they figured in to have two guys fake fight for a minute in the middle somehow. Right. And we all know, and it's continued now with Russo, how little wrestling bell-to-bell -bell there is on the shows that he writes. And someone just posted on our message board the other day the ESPN look at wrestling that they took in 1999, and a lot of those cropped up. People were looking at this phenomena that was happening with wrestling, and they weren't happy with a lot of what they were seeing, and neither was I, frankly. Was there a point, do you think, the WWF went over the line with some of their material? May Young giving birth to a hand. It's disgusting. Then they had the whole relationship with Mark Henry and Mae Young to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have her give birth to a prosthetic hand. Made no sense. Made no sense whatsoever. And then it, it just kind of disappeared, the whole angle. Nothing really, the Attitude Era, offended me. <laughs> but there's one thing. Were you watching? <laughs> I was never like, obviously, you know, a lot of stuff was Usually it's off a variety show of <laughs> offensive material. <laughs> But sticking with Mae Young, I'd say the, the Royal Rumble 2000. Oh. Oh. That's something that I have the Royal Rumble on tape, and I always fast forward that part because mm. it's disgusting, it's nasty, and it's uncalled for. Well, it was tits for me, too, and I'm not a prude. <laughs> uh, but in 1998, fully loaded a pay-per-view around that time when Sable was getting really hot. Mm -hmm. They were doing a lot of goofy shit with her. Like, she came out in that ridiculous, okay, like, sorry. pic... Yeah, well, I mean, like, a picnic table-looking thing. Like, gee, I wonder if this is going to be torn off. And sure enough, she's wearing the skimpiest bikini with the biggest fake tits. And it always bugged me because... Because Brock's it, having sex with her right now. No. <laughs> it bugged me because this was an arena full of kids. As much as they want to say we're all for kids now, I think demographically there were actually more kids watching then. They could have said this is TV 14 bullshit. There's action figures in the stores. This is marketed towards kids. All the sponsors like M&Ms are for kids. So we all know what's really going on here. And I just thought it was uncomfortable that she took off her top in that bikini contest with Jacqueline mm -hmm. and she had the painted on bikini. I was like, she's pretty much naked in an arena full of kids. I thought that was when kids always they always want to see that kind of stuff. Right. Like when we were growing up, if you ever watched Eddie Murphy's stand up at late at night, you, we always had that kind of stuff. Kids always want to see something that crosses the line. Right. I think we were a little too old for it. That mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and I also look at the gun segment with uh, Brian Pillman, which was like reality TV almost more like so. Like watching an episode of Cops. Yeah, yeah, it was like watching an episode of Cops where Austin's like destroying a home. He actually busting out, you know, Pillman's real home. So that was like a little 
over the line, you know, especially with gun violence and everything like that. It's just like um, someone could just have a pistol in their house ready to fire on somebody. America, though, was a completely different place yeah. in 1996. I've referred to it on the show. It's Bill Clinton's carefree 90s. <laughs> it's how much can we get away with? What can we do? When Bush came into office, it became more conservative. Yeah. But back then, it was really like just do it anything goes. Pushing the line. Yeah. Plus, everything. the internet was blown up back yeah. then. Do you think it got any better when Russo and Farrar left in 99? Because let's not forget that a few months later was the influx of all the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. We had Kurt Angle debuting, Taz just came in, and then all the radicals, more or less around the same time frame. So a lot of people look back fondly on 2000 as the wrestling year. Mm -hmm. But do you think the product got better overall after they left? Not for a few years. Mm -hmm. I, I think it really didn't get that much better until the debut of Brock in 2002 right. and after that. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the transitional period at that point. Yeah, that, that, that it was the post that. It was though. showcase, I think most of the matches were better around that era. I think most people will say that the matches really stuck out more mm -hmm. than the other ones because they were showcasing the WCW wrestlers that got a whole new platform to work with. People were really into what they were seeing on TV and they were buying all the merchandise and everything. Well, 2000 up until recently, I think was their most profitable year. And let's not forget that was the year Austin wasn't there, yes. strangely mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Rock was hosting SNL. They were doing pretty well, but I think the booking took a little while because there was that period when Russo left that they really didn't know what to do. So they gave Stephanie amnesia and didn't remember Test for a couple weeks and they trying to figure out what to do with that storyline. We all could have been so fortunate to not remember Test for a few weeks. <laughs> Rock was rock bottoming Bulldog into dog shit and a lot of oh, stupid yeah. stuff was going on. And then the transition into Stephanie and her Hollywood writers. So it got much better for the wrestlers, didn't it? <laughs> but... Overall, for that few year time frame, what did you like and what did you dislike about the Attitude Era? I liked how we got rid of a lot of the cartoony jobbers. There was T.L. No Hopper, goon, the dentist. T yeah, Duke the Dumpster, Drossy. A lot of those cartoon gimmicks were gone. It started to shift towards something better temporarily, maybe not better overall in the long run, though. I like how we had more, I guess, adult-oriented storylines, something that we could almost relate to. And just like you were saying, a lot of the cartoon characters are that, and I felt like the wrestlers were being themselves. Like, a lot of the key wrestlers. Like, when, when they were cutting promos, I, I the didn't The key think, wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, the key, not all the wrestlers. Right. But I felt like a lot of them were, were like, having more fun than, they, you know, they were years prior. And I thought that was, uh, it portrayed well on TV. I think the best thing overall was just the competition that was on television at the time. You got two other wrestling organizations to look at. And the fans are, all, like they always say, are the winners in this situation where we had so much to see. We had so many different things we could look at and they were all somewhat good in their own ways. And obviously WWE's talent, the storylines were all great. And then what I didn't like about it is when the acquisition of all those companies were gone. That to me was like the biggest mistake that they could have made. We've know, never recovered. Business wise, it's and they haven't recovered. recovered. They've lost rating. When you're starting going from like a seven to like a, a seven point five, now you're down to like a three point six. The times have changed, yes, but can you could always keep that up there? With There's no always, competition, they with no competition lost everybody. They lost everything. What I liked about it, and I did like the Attitude Era for the first year or two. 1997 was my favorite year in wrestling overall. Like you were saying, well, I think every major company was doing really well with their wrestling and their writing. Going into 1999, they lost me. Once they started getting a little more convoluted with doing the stuff that was way over the line, I thought taking the focus off of wrestling because it is wrestling after all. And then Vince McMahon going on these shows like with Bob Costas and ESPN, like, ha ha ha, I think Mark Henry getting a blowjob from a tranny is comic. <laughs> He's trying to justify all this stupid shit. It really made me embarrassed as a wrestling fan for the first time that this guy is representing wrestling in a way going on TV and acting like such a dumbass. But that might be some of the worst of the Attitude Era. And we're going to do the best and worst of the Attitude Era when we come back. <laughs> 